Hello, I'm Dr. Benito Rattan, and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of color. As you know, I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is all about eczema. How do we treat it, the mistakes that get made, um, the step-by-step -step routine, and also with our children, what we can be doing in order to help with their eczema. If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So another word for eczema would be atopic dermatitis. So even if you googled atopic dermatitis, it'd be the same thing as eczema. So the symptoms would be itchiness, redness, inflammation, thickening of the skin called lichenification. But the overriding symptom is the itchiness. The itchiness can be so bad, it can keep you up at night. It is more prevalent in childhood and it's been thought that 10% of children get eczema. So those numbers change depending on which paper you're looking at, but it is a significant proportion of our kids. Now, the biggest mistake I see with eczema and children are the products that get used. Imagine that with eczema, the skin barrier has been compromised. So it's not as protected. Already, children's skin is not as well protected as adult skin. But now on top of that, the itching and the inflammation means that the skin is even less protected. This means you have to be even more careful with what you put on the skin. So the things to avoid on the skin would be things like fragrance or essential oils. Unfortunately, the vast, vast majority of baby friendly products contain fragrance and essential oils. In fact, some of them even market the fragrance or market the essential oils. The problem is fragrance is the number one cause of contact dermatitis and essential oils sensitize normal skin, let alone compromised skin. So the first thing I want you to look at is, is the product NAF safe? That means no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, and no essential oils. Denatured alcohol dries the skin, which you absolutely do not want on compromised skin. The other mistake I see being made is it baby-friendly products saying that they are natural. Now, it's fine if they're natural, but... Fragrance is natural. Essential oils are natural. So actually there are irritating ingredients that are natural that then get put into these baby safe products and then market themselves as natural. I just want you to be aware of the irritancy profile of ingredients and not get swayed by marketing. That's what this whole channel is about, is about education and empowerment so that you don't fall for marketing. So at the back of every uh, product, so this is our uh, Inzincable Mineral Sunscreen for Skin of Color. At the back, you'll see the Inky List, I-N-C-I. -I. The Inky List is the ingredients list. It's in descending order at the back. If you've watched more than 10 of my videos, you should be able to decode the ingredients, more than 50% of the ingredients on your skincare sitting in your bathroom right now. That would then make you a Dr. V Inky Hacker. That's my aim, is that you should know what's in your product and not have to read the front of the packaging to, you know, which is basically someone in a boardroom who wrote whatever they wanted on the front of the packaging. Now, if you have eczema, it may be that you have the triangle of ATP. So it may mean that you also have asthma, you also have hay fever. So often they all go hand in hand. So the classic pathway that you see is initially you have the redness and the scratching and the itchiness. That's the acute phase. The chronic phase happens over a longer period of time. And this is can happen over months and years, where the constant scratching has now led to the thickening of skin and the secondary infection. So every time you break the skin, you're allowing bacteria into the skin because that's one of the functions of the skin is to protect your skin from fungus and bacteria that's in our environment. So if that's no longer being protected, you're allowing bacteria into the skin, which leads to more inflammation. So it becomes this vicious cycle. The worst thing for skin of color is that we, this all ends in hyper pigmentation for us because any form of inflammation as I always say one scratch one bite or one burn and we hyper pigment so imagine years of scratching and inflammation leads to these patches of darkness and it usually happens wherever the inflammation is so often it happens in the inner elbows the back of the knees around the eye area. So there's specific areas that does tend to take place. The confusion I've heard often actually is that people say, oh, I started using steroids and that led to the pigmentation. That's incorrect. The, what steroids do is that it reduces the inflammation 
once you've reduced the inflammation, what you're left with is the pigmentation that was happening because of the inflammation. So it's not the steroid cream that's leading to the pigmentation. The steroid cream is actually good and it slows down, reduces any inflammation. But at the after you have the inflammation phase, after it goes red, it goes brown. And so people incorrectly correlate the two. When it comes to the cause of eczema, we don't know the exact cause. It could be genetic, it could be immune, it could be due to barrier dysfunction. It tends to also be exacerbated by allergens. So you might find it worse, for example, in the summer when there's pollen, or if you have a pet that um, you know goes outside to play and then comes back in, and dander can worsen eczema. So how do you manage it? So first of all, we want to shorten our showers to five to 10 minutes maximum. You want lukewarm water. When you use that steaming hot water, I know it feels relaxing on your muscles. I know you feel like all the stress of the day is being washed away, but it is drying your skin. You are opening up those pores. You have more transepidermal water loss. Your skin is gonna feel tighter and drier afterwards. It's a big mistake. Please avoid bar soaps. Bar soaps tend to be more alkaline um, which it can compromise your skin barrier further. I want you to make sure that your shower gels are NAFE safe. That means no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, no essential oils. And I would say only use shower gels in dirty areas. So that's underarms, groin area. Don't use it everywhere because it's unnecessary. When you come out of the shower, while you're still wet apply your body oil because it traps water in the skin. Basically, your skin's gonna feel very tight very quickly, which is a mistake. I want you to first trap water in the skin, pat yourself dry, don't uh, dry yourself too harshly. Avoid lotions. Lotions have a high water content, water evaporates very quickly, and you're left feeling dry much quicker. So I would rather you use more of an occlusive, a thicker moisturizer with petrolatum, there's more of an ointment-based moisturizer that actually feels thick on the skin. Antihistamines are a tablet that you can take, which has also been shown to relieve the itching. Temporarily, if you have a flare-up, you can use steroids. It's, it's a fine balance because what you're trying to do is to reduce the inflammation so that you reduce the itching, so you reduce the chance of secondary infection and you reduce the chances of skin thickening. But if you use steroids for too long, it can lead to thinning of skin and then the skin feels like paper and it cuts quickly and people don't like the appearance of it. You know, you've been wearing steroids for a long time. So it really is a fine balance. It's not something to be afraid of, but it's something to be aware of. Don't forget all your, your skin is now basically compromised. This means you have to use products that are NAF safe. No denatured alcohol, no fragrance and no essential oils. Denatured alcohol dries the skin. It's volatile. It's a short chain alcohol that evaporates quickly. And as it evaporates, it takes water away with it. Fragrance is the number one cause of contact dermatitis, which I want you to avoid. And essential oils basically sensitize the skin. So look for NAFE safe products. In fact, if you follow me on Instagram, um, Dr. Benita Ratan, I've actually, I list all NAFE safe products um, that are good for skin of color. As you know, none of my content has ever been sponsored and it will never be sponsored. It is purely a reference library for our skin of color community. Now, a lot of you ask me, can you start using tyrosinase inhibitors to treat the pigmentation when you have eczema? Now, even with the dark circles kit or the facial pigmentation kit, the skin of color, I would say don't use this until your skin has fully recovered. Because if you start wearing tyrosinase inhibitors, when your skin is still compromised, you're only gonna irritate it further. So even with our Dr. V kits, they all contain triple A. That's retinaldehyde, retinol palmitate, and retinol. Those are already drying ingredients, so you wouldn't put that on the skin when the skin is already compromised. So the most important thing is to get your flare-ups under control, see what's triggering it, and moisturize you know, religiously. In your bag, you should always have your emollient to be moisturizing throughout the day. You're almost like creating yourself a, a second layer of skin. Only when you feel like your skin has recovered and feels healthy is in non-irritated and isn't flaking that you can start thinking about tyrosinase inhibitors to treat pigmentation post eczema. If you want me to make a specific video on post eczema pigmentation for skin of color, can you write that down below for me so I know if that's something you really want or if it's you know not something that's bothering you. 
just so I'm aware. Don't forget to download your free guide for skincare for skin of color as well. The link is down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Dr. Mita Rattan, Skincare by Dr. V, and also on TikTok, Dr. Mita Rattan. And I've just created a private Facebook group for our inner circle of Dr. V Inky Hackers called Dr. V Inky Hackers. <laughs> and you have to answer some questions to get into the into the group. But the group is basically a safe space for you to talk about your skincare, talk about your problems, and we can all chime in and help. What I've realized is that our community is massive. We've had over 25 million views of this channel. The number of us out there actually that are educated now on skincare for skin of color is enormous. And if we can all come together to be able to help each other, that would just be incredible. So please do join if this is something that, you know, a place that you want to be and the topic you want to discuss. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.